Hi everyone and welcome back to the Retro Shack. If you recall, back in December we had an episode where we looked at a ZX Spectrum Plus which had been advertised as mint in box and that I bought for about £40 if memory serves. Well, we looked over the machine and whilst in generally good nick there were some things to address. I put it to you guys to decide whether we should keep it original and stored away for posterity or whether I should get the soldering iron out. Guess what you decided? Here at the Shack, we'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this video, my good friends at PCBWay. They'll be helping us out with our PCB fabrication needs and offer a very professional and high quality service for extremely reasonable prices. They can even populate your PCBs for you if you're tired of waving a hot iron around. There's a link to their website in the description where you can check out all of the amazing services they offer. Now back to the show. Well, one thing that I discovered after the last video was that a couple of games glitched out intermittently and this unit seemed to be having more than its fair share of crashes. If this ROM was socketed, I'd pop it out and put in this replacement diagnostic ROM to do some checks. But in this case, the standard ROM is soldered to the board, so I'll be plugging this diagnostic cartridge into the expansion port and running a memory check to see if we have any poorly RAM chips. We'll plug the keyboard back in so we can navigate the diagnostics menu and then we'll boot up. This particular diagnostics ROM has four different diagnostic toolkits available, all selectable using these dip switches. For now, I just want to run a simple memory check to see if anything reports as faulty. This diagnostic ROM from Retrolium has helped me out a load in the past. When you power on the Speccy with this ROM enabled, the very first thing it does is a test of the lower memory with this nice yellow border. And presuming all is well there, it will move on to testing the upper 32K of memory and change to a magenta border. One thing to note is that the RAM tests always stop at the first error. There may be more bad chips as well. There's a full compound test that you can run which will test all address space and tell you all the bad chips if you want. Might as well confirm that the speaker is dead while we're here. We'd be hearing an increasingly annoying sound at this point if it wasn't, so it's definitely a goner. Anyway, let's get a solder in, and the first thing on the agenda is to install the obligatory composite video mod to give us a much nicer video quality than RF, and most modern TVs have a composite input. This particular board caters for three different varieties, and you're free to try all of them to get the best possible picture from your chosen telly. We'll go for option one, which requires a 100 UF capacitor like this. And if you remember, on these capacitors, the long leg is the positive and the arrows on the capacitor casing will point towards the negative leg. For this option, we also need a 100 ohm resistor, which as you'll recall is not polarized, so it can be placed either way round on the board. If you have lots of resistors, it's a good idea to orient them all the same way as this makes recognizing values much easier if you need to troubleshoot. And lastly, this option also calls for a 2N3906 transistor, which I don't have, but I do have a BC557, which is a suitable alternative. But we do need to put the BC557 in backwards as the emitter and collector nodes are inverse to those of the 2N3906. And through the magic of video editing, here's the completed soldered board along with our trailing wires for connection to the spectrum. Yellow is the video out signal, green the video in, and red our positive 5 volt supply. Now when fitting this we want everything to look as original as possible, and therefore we're going to mount this little PCB inside an original spectrum RF modulator housing, like this one. This particular unit was lying around in my spares drawer and was labelled as dead, so it's a good candidate for this. If you're doing this yourself to your own specy, you might want to buy a separate housing rather than use the one that came with your machine, so you've got a nice easy way back if you need to. This one has obviously been the recipient of some earlier love and affection, as the video out cable has already been desoldered. And in fact, the whole PCB has been desoldered from the housing, so this should just push out. That all being desoldered like that probably explains why it was sitting in my spares drawer in the first place. 
So let's pop our new PCB in place and in doing so we'll firstly route these wires to where they'll need to be. The green video in and the red 5 volt power will go through these holes on the side of the housing and the yellow video out will terminate at the RCA jack so needs to stay on the inside. A bit of wiggling, brute force and ignorance and we have everything in place. That looks nice and neat so let's pop this bit of cardboard insulation on the bottom to stop any shorts and then we'll pop the bottom of the housing back on. Ok so now we'll need to trim these wires back as we don't want there to be too much resistance. I normally trim these to around 5cm for the power and video in and 3cm for the video out. So enough to play with but not enough to cause any issues. Once the wire is cut to length it's good to tin the wire as it will make soldering the connection easier and also ensures that all of the wires are making an electrical connection. And with the video out connected let's pop the top of the housing back on because we're done with the inside. So back to the Spectrum mainboard and here we can see the old RF modulator that we'll be taking off ready to pop our new composite module in. And while we're in here today we'll also be replacing this speaker. I want to remove the need for the heatsink by replacing the 7805 voltage regulator with this Traco power switching regulator that doesn't generate any heat at all and is a direct pin replacement for the 7805. For now though let's remove this old RF unit and finish our composite upgrade. There's a lot of solder holding these parts in place so we'll be resorting to the old heat it up with a hot air gun and prise it off with a screwdriver approach. Which does work quite well and it's quite dramatic too. A bit of isopropyl alcohol and some effort with the desoldering pump and we have a board nice and clean and ready to accept the replacement part. We'll make sure that it's firmly and securely located on the board and then solder that sucker in place. So now we need to connect the video in and power cables to their correct places on the mainboard. The way we've routed these wires each connection point is directly under where the wire exits the housing. We just need to trim, tin and solder in place. And then it's time for a power on test. Well, I'll call that a success. It's certainly much cleaner although there are still a few artifacts but we'll hopefully sort those out too. Next on the agenda is the voltage regulator. A failing regulator can cause havoc on a mainboard by sending incorrect voltages around and frying chips and these 7805s also generate a lot of heat, hence the massive heatsink. With that huge chunk of metal out of the way let's desolder this 7805. I'll keep it in my spares drawer as these are used in a lot of older machines. These new Traco power units come in a variety of amperage capacities so make sure you get one that's suitable for your machine. This one is rated up to 1 amp which is more than enough for this 48k board and is the same rating as the original 7805. There, much neater and much cooler running. So let's just power up and make sure it's all still working and that seems just fine. There's no heat or noise coming off this so this machine will be cool in every sense of the word. So with the composite mod installed, the voltage regulator upgraded, we can now tackle this speaker so we can get some lovely beeps. This is the simplest part we have to replace today as it's only held in by two solder joints. The old speaker comes out with very little trouble and when we compare it to this new replacement we can clearly see the damage done to the old unit. No wonder the poor thing couldn't make any noise. 
Installing the new speaker is a simple matter of popping it in and soldering the two pins. Let's try a simple test to see if our little Specky has a voice now. Well, that certainly sounded beepy, so let's chalk that one up to a win as well. Now, on to the last leg of today's round of modifications, changing the capacitors. You'll find a lot of divided opinion on whether you actually should do this unless you need to. You've seen me solder things a million times, so let's use the power of editing to just get the job done. To me, if a component is not operating at its correct efficiency, it should be replaced. And apart from looking nice, here's the real point of this. This is the 4.7K capacitor that I took out of the spectrum, and if we plug it into this tester, we can see that actually this is providing a capacitance of 6.1K. Again, this 22UF capacitor is reading 27UF, and I saw the same level of degradation across all of the capacitors. So in this instance, absolutely right to change them. So let's pop the machine back together for now and bask in the glory of our newly maintained and upgraded Lil Ol' Specky. I still haven't managed to track down that intermittent fault, but I'm sure I will at some point. And with that beautiful screeching sound coming from our new speaker, we should turn our attention to what's still to come for this machine. Well, there are two main things I'm looking at here. I want to replace this Spectrum keyboard with a Cherry MX compatible version, so I'll probably end up designing a new PCB for that, to replace the current membrane setup inside. I'm also going to be building one of these TK Pi boards, which with the help of the ubiquitous Raspberry Pi, allows full HDMI output from this machine. Amazing. Anyway, thanks as always for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed giving this little Specky some love. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications of new content. Please leave your comments below, as we always love to read them. If you've got anything that you'd like to donate and see featured on the channel, please drop us an email. If you'd like to support us, there are links for Patreon and our Buyers of Coffee page in the banner on the main channel page. So until next time in the Retro Shack, it's goodbye from me.